Ok. See, try to add net again. Sorry, guys. Wow, I'm so, I'm so intrigued. Not only intrigued, but I've learned a lot talking to my good friend. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Come in. Okay. Sorry for that. <laughs> back well we, had, we did we got into the hour it was almost a good way to finish like ah. <laughs> um so. but yeah as i was saying you know it's it's those two choices and that's it it's that you will you can there's only two ways to go your value is going to come from the world or your value is going to come from from mm -hmm. god and, and the problem is the world is going to really just leave you short you know because a lot of us just don't fit into that box you know and and, and even the people who think they fit into that box they, you know I've met wealthy people who just have no purpose, no identity. They don't understand what they're doing in their lives. They crumble so quickly. The first problem that comes up, they're just, they've lost for words. You know, they have identity crises. Yeah. You know, the, the thing that is amazing about Christ is you have a new identity because we need a new identity, you know? So if you put your identity in your looks, it's going to go. You put your identity in your money, it's going to be empty because money is just pieces of paper that we put value on. You know, you put your identity in what you've achieved and, you know, sometimes people won't care, you know? It's, it's, it's one of those things where the only time you're ever going to really feel that value is when you feel and understand how God has a, his value system and it's your heart, you know? And, and what's crazy about that is no one else will know about it, you know? One thing that I've learned in my lifetime as I've continued on this journey with, with Christ, you know, it's so funny how corrupted we are. Like when we want, when we do, um, Oh, I lost you for a second. When we do something good, we want to tell everybody about it, you know, and the Bible's, you know, when Jesus talks about, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. You know, if you, if you do something good, do it in secret. So no one knows because your heavenly father sees you. And if you go and proclaim it to, you know, the, the rooftops and around the streets, you've received your reward in full. So even my good deeds, I have to like, you know, remind myself, this is between me and God. Like how, but how powerful is that? When you see a world on social media, as soon as someone does something good, they have to tell everybody about it, you know? Um, so one thing I've kind of done is like, you know, the, the things that I'm doing for other people, you'll never know. You'll never know unless you're the person that's been affected by it, you know? And, 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 and that just kind of, again, goes to show the, the motive behind my actions that God's going, I'm weighing your heart. I'm not weighing how many people think you're good. I'm, I'm weighing your actual heart about how willing you are to love. Like I have loved you and that that's powerful. And that's purpose for the rest of my life because th whether I live for another 50 years or another 20 years, we live in a broken world and there's so much to be done, Nelson, so much. Even now, there's probably people listening to this life story who are depressed, who are struggling, who have no identity, you know, that they're, they're, they're isolated, they don't have, you know, good friendship and they're, and they're struggling and you're like, wow, we, there are people who need the gospel, you know. The one thing that I've been encouraged by is that when you – when, when God came and sought me out and he sought me out, he chose me and said, you, I'm fixing you and I'm coming and I'm going to restore you. But when he came to fix me, he wasn't just thinking about my life in that moment. He was thinking about every single other life that I will come into contact with that will get to know his truth. Because the thing is, God wants to use people. That's from the beginning. God said, I'm going to create man and we're going to let us create man in our image. What, what, what's his image of goodness? His character is of love and giving. I'm, we're going to create you in our image that you're going to do the same thing. You're going to reproduce what, what I am, you know? Um, and, and I think he wants to use us and he will use us for his name's sake. So every time he saves someone, every time he brings someone into a greater truth, he's not only thinking about that person. He's not only thinking about that, that one sheep that's gone astray. He's also thinking about the other 99 sheep that are about to go astray. Or the other 99 that he has to go on. But, the, you know, it's all about bringing them in so more can come in. And, and that purpose in the kingdom is powerful, you know, every single day, every single day, no matter what people say, you know. And I think that was the thing for me, you know, for people who suffer with depression. I've suffered with depression. I think every young person, you know, has suffered on some level with depression. You know, I was, I was in a relationship. I was cheated on. I was heartbroken. I was 
you know, my value system was in that person loving me. All of a sudden I was at rock bottom. You know, you have, you know, these suicidal thoughts, you know, it's human nature to feel like that where you feel like I've given up on the world. And I remember when I was in Iraq, like I was talking about on our last live, um, I was in a place where I said, God, I'm done. I'm done. I don't care anymore. I'm just, I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm tired and I'm weak and I can't keep up. And I, and I'm not, I hate myself. You know, I hate what my life looks like. And he said, if you are so willing to give up on your life, so willing to give it all up, which is what happens when we get to that place of depression where we're like, I just give up. I'm just not, I don't care if I live. I don't care if I die. He says, well, give it up to me. What's the difference? And it's true. Like what difference, like Nelson? If I don't care now what people think, what happens if I live, I die, God goes, now I can use you. Because now you don't care what the world thinks. Now you don't care if you have a comfortable life. Now you don't care if someone hates you for my name's sake. Now you become a vessel that I can use to bring my good news because now you will love not caring if people love you back. And that's what Jesus did. He loved not hoping that they would go, yes, we love you. You're the yeah, Messiah. We love regardless of your response. And that's what we're supposed to be like. And the only time we'll truly be like that is when we've given up on the world. Because when you give up on the world, you don't care. That's why when people say to me, oh, I'm going to unfollow you. Okay. I'm going to refollow you again. Okay. You know? And, and, and people go, well, what happens if you talk about Christ and people get uncomfortable? Okay. Okay. Like, you know, you're either going to fear man or you're going to fear God. And when I talk about fearing God, my fear is that I would be separated from God. My fear is that I would be so far from God that I would never feel his presence again. That's my fear, you know. And what propels me to preach his word and to, to live in his word and to share the gospel is because I don't want to be separated from him. Because if I align myself with men, I'm going to get left out in the cold anyway. You know, so anyway, that was that. Uh, any more questions yeah. before? Wow. <laughs> no, more, no more questions, but I just want to say I truly appreciate everything you, you've said. And for this last part, which is kind of laying emphasis on seeking our uh, approval must come from God. We must seek God's approval. And as you, as you mentioned, the tendency is always to go with the approval of the world. What does the world think? What do people think? But once we are able to put our priority is that it is God who created me out of his love. And it's this same God that motivates me, that spares my life, then I think we won't be overburdened with st stupid things. Because I, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give an example. Like, I remember when my mom, you give an example of your, your rock bottom. Mm. Four years ago, on, on Friday, is going to make it four years. And my mom passed away. When she died, I couldn't believe it. But what happened was that I was going home from holidays. I had a good time in Congo, working with young people. It was excellent. I was going back home, happy that I'm going to see my parents after two years. And inside the car, I was scared that my mom shouldn't die. She wasn't sick or anything, but that was this irrational fear, you know? And then wow. after three weeks, three weeks after I arrived, she died. She died. I was depressed. I tell you, mate, mm. I was even had seen black magic. I don't think I would have hesitated. Because mm. I went to the lowest part of my of life. I was, it was too much. I remember coming to Jerusalem every day. I was crying. It was sometimes I'm, I'm just in the shower and the, the memory comes. I'm like, I start crying. But one thing that I draw my strength from is that I had to do a 30 days retreat in Nairobi. There were like no phones, no laptop, nothing. Just wow. completely me and nature having a 30 days experience with God. And then mm. I had this, I had a moderator, an old nun, as I was talking to her, she was guiding me to doing that process. So that kind of helped me really overcome these difficulties. It comes from time to time, but I really had to rise above it. And as I say, it reminds me that once we put, once our approval comes from God, nothing is gonna, so nothing's gonna shake us. So yeah, I think a few things on that. There, yeah, yeah, Nelson, a few things I'll say on that. Just you know, death is. Death is the scariest reality that we, we will all face. And often it's the death of the people we love that is more hard to deal with than our own. 
you know, and, and, and it's a struggle, but you know, and, and, and first and foremost, that pain is real. And that pain is there for a reason because it wasn't supposed to, death wasn't supposed to be, death is not part of the program. You know, you know, in the book of Romans, he talks about the, you know, the, the wages of, of sin is death. Yeah. Death is in our world. But, you know, for me as a Christian and, you know, we're all going to face that reality where we lose people or, and it's, it, it, the pain makes you go, this world is broken. That's what, that's first and foremost. You should, this does, it doesn't feel right. God. But what we find in the story of Jesus is, wait a second, he deals with death. You know, every time someone was, was pronounced dead in the gospel of Luke, he said, no, they're sleeping. They're sleeping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People laughed at him. People were like, you're, cra you're crazy. They're not sleeping. But to Jesus, right, to Jesus they were sleeping because he is the giver of life. He is life. So to him, you're not dead because I can do that and you're alive. It's the death I, I will and I will defeat death, not for my purposes. God didn't have to come down and go, Oh, I gotta beat death, I gotta beat it. it. Wasn't for it wasn't for him, it was for us. It was for you and I to have that hope that even the worst thing that we understand that can happen to someone we love or to ourselves, which is death, my God has confronted and defeated in a real world historical event, so I can have confidence in him. Because he's like, Okay, look, you're not gonna just trust me. So I'm probably just going to come down and do it. And, and that is going to be the, the, the centerpiece of my message that in three days I'm going to raise from the dead. Why? So that you might believe that in all things I have you covered everything. And that's, you know, I, you know, I know people struggle with death and I know a lot of people have lost someone, but this, if that's the case, this is hope now. That's it. This is it. No, no, no other God has come and entered into the story and, 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 and approached the issue of death like Christ did. And yeah. that is a power thing where we go, there's no other truth. You can go and believe in your other God. You can go and believe in your other book, but you don't have any practical proof that you're going to get resurrected. Nothing. But my God not only told he was going to do it, did it, proved mm -hmm. it, and, and now we, we cling to the risen Christ. Now I want to come face to face because Christ is alive and we believe in a living mm. God, you know, and, 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 and praise God for that, you know, because otherwise if, you know, like Paul says, if, if Christ didn't rise from the dead, this is a waste of time. This is for nothing. Yeah. But now it's the of our lives going, yeah, you know what? Man can defeat a lot of things. You're not going to defeat death, but my God does. So you better align yourself. Um, so yeah, in saying that, you know, um, that's, that's a really, really important thing. Also just with, you know, depression, I want to give a really practical, um, you know, you know, I talk about, you know, you're getting your value from either the world or from, from, you know, from God, people might go, okay, well, how do I do that? Practically, mm -hmm. you know, it sounds good. Sounds great. I love what you're saying. I feel like, okay, yeah, that's a good point. You're right. Because I've been trying to get my value from the world and it hasn't worked. And now I feel depressed, but what's the practical implication of that? Well, the practical implication is opening up this book. Like I say all the time, read the word because there's a reason why God wanted his word recorded because we just forget. We're forgetful creatures, you know. And, and, and the other thing is you will never feel or understand the power of God until you actually put it at the front of your life, you know. A lot of Christian people come to me and they go, I've never really, like I've been a Christian my whole life or I grew up in the church, but I've never really felt God. And I asked him the question straight away. Have you ever preached the gospel to someone who didn't know Christ? No. Or have you ever tried to be different to the people in your school and your college and your work and your community? Just to just set an example of what Christ looks like to people who don't know. Well, not really. Have you ever read the Bible cover to cover? No. So you've never done any of that. No, of course you're not going to feel anything. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like someone coming to me and going, oh, like, um, you know, uh, I've never really understood what, it, what, what the, the power of a chainsaw feels like through a tree. I was like, have you ever done it? No. Have you ever turned a chainsaw on? No. Well, of course you're not going to know what it feels like. You've got to use it. You know, this is, this is you. And the, the, the problem is, this is what people don't like. The only time it really becomes usable is when you know it, which means you have yeah. to do the work. You know what I mean? You have yeah. to do the work. Again, it's the stumbling block. I will go back to this time and time again. People go, where do I start in the Bible? Chapter 1, verse 1, to Genesis. How far do I go? To Revelation. You know, it's, 
it, there's no there's no easy way around it. And you know what I love about that? It it immediately tells you what your heart where your heart is right now. If anyone's watching this live video, they'll say they go, "Oh, I just don't really want to read the Bible." Well, I know where your heart is. You know, but anyone who's sitting there, you know what? I've procrastinated. I've, you know, I got to the genealogies and I've just stopped or I've never really been engaged. I've never committed to it, but now I am. Then we know where your heart is. And that's, that's what God's looking at. He's looking at the heart. He's looking at the person right now who might be, you know, in some country that you and I will never visit a person that we'll never meet face to face. And he's talking to them saying, now is the time that you get to choose. Where's your heart at? You know? And that's, that's what I love about this, you know, this journey, this book is God is, he talks to people who don't even realize he's talking to them, you know? Yeah. It's really amazing. It's really amazing. I just want to buy thank you. I want to ask you, you, uh, you were think uh, you were supposed to come on the 29th of June, I think, end of the month. So yeah. you, every day, every year you do this um, Jesus trek. You do it with some of your friends and Christians who, who that feel that they want to make this experience of Christ. Do you think, with what is happening in the world, do you think, do you plan to do that anytime soon? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. I mean, I just, I, I love the land and I love taking people to the places where Jesus was. I love just breaking their understanding of the Bible and going, hey, let's talk about, you know, why Jesus cursed these three cities, you know, Capernaum, uh, Chorazin, and, and let's talk about why they're still not today. They're, they're just yeah. rubble. And you tell me in control of the universe. You know what I mean? So I just, I love bringing people to the land. I love taking them and I love saying like, you know, this is what you thought you knew about the Bible, but this is what, this is the, this is the, stage where the bible was set this is this is where jesus walked this is where when jesus you know you know i mean i've, I've got my palm sunday brand and and it's my reminder that that our king has come but this is the place where he triumphantly entered into jerusalem on a donkey from a prophecy from you know zechariah 9 9 where you just realize wow my god has just got every base covered and it's you look at jerusalem and you go i'm looking at the same landscape that my god saw when he came to save a broken humanity. That's powerful. So, yeah, I'll be back. I just don't know when. As soon as this um, you know, this travel yeah. ban is lifted, I, I hope yeah. you're still there so we can catch I up. Hope so. and... I hope so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I I just want to say, share something personal. Okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm sending to the, to the viewers out there, the followers, right? They're just following us right now. Um, it's something I experienced with you. I remember one day I, I, I texted on the phone. I said, hey, brother, how are you? Um, you say fine. You say you're Australian, and I say, oh, tell mom that your black cousin is saying hi. And he told me, not my black cousin, my brother. You know, I said, now I'm gonna tell mom that my brother is saying hi. That really, really went to my heart. You know, I think this is one thing which is very important for we out there. We have to realize that no matter what part of the world we find ourselves, we are interconnected, and this bond goes beyond the bond of color of or or countries or race but it's about realizing that we are one single humanity and sharing that message of love because it's, as i said it's wanting to be a christian it's another thing to live, to say i'm a christian another thing to live it and when i see a young person striving to live it every day through these daily commitments it motivates me and i believe that it's also motivating somebody out there listening to us i'm going to show you the view of i'm going to show you the view of how the dad knows that the, the world looks like right now before you go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. I window. miss it. Oh, yeah. I, no, I, I want to I get that room again and take some. Oh, wow. So, so that is the so Temple Mount. Look Temple straight Mount, ahead. Yeah. Yes. The the yeah. And every night they disturb me from sleeping. 4 a.m. every day. I have to 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have to wake up. But it's so. It's, uh, Wow. wow. Really, brother, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the words oh, shared. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the friendship. Thank you for taking your time to, because one thing is giving our time to the other person. And that's what you've done for all those that have followed us this afternoon and evening in your place there. So thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. And then God will continue to bless you and we'll continue to be in touch. Stay safe and say hi to mom, okay? God bless hey, you. Well, you know what we do? We're going to go to Nigeria and we're going to shake up those prosperity gospel uh, <laughs> I can't wait for that. <laughs> I'm the first, I'm going to rock the boat, bro. I'm going to rock the boat. Yeah. That's, all, that's, that's then, what I want to do. Yeah. Can I, can, okay, I just want to ask you something. I just out of the way, okay? 
What's what's your favorite line in the, the movies, Vampire Diaries? What was your favorite, one of your favorite lines? You have any? Oh, gosh, I mean, you know, like I don't know. You know what's funny? I I don't know if I even remember any lines. You know, I'm oh, like, uh, you know what? I, I had this funny experience that actually happened. Uh, like a couple of days ago, you know, super fans, and this is how you can tell there's super fans, and there's just like you know, like the the Nigerian guy that recognized me um, when when he came to my house, he he was like, I recognize this guy, but I don't know who he is. But then there's super fans, so I went to the shops the other day, and I had a face mask on because I was doing groceries, and we have to wear face masks, and I had a cap, so I literally was like, you could just see. My I was in my eyes and these girls followed me for about like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, and I was like, how did they even recognize me as Cole? With Joe? That's it. I was like, I'm, I was like, ticket to you. Like you guys are you super fans. But honestly, I, like I forget that I've done the show I li- and people oh. look at me. Fun- like sometimes I'm like, why is this person looking at me? Um, but it's just, yeah. you know, I'm very grateful for it because it's given me a platform, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I think people would probably most like the line, relax, darling, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> when, I, when I beat the you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. relax, darling. Davina, Davina, I, I haven't even done the accent for a long time, you know, I probably <laughs> shocked right now. like, it doesn't sound like Cole, who is this cheap ripoff? <laughs> What's with this beard? Shave, bro. Shave. <laughs> All right, I'll shave. Good, you know. That's good. But I think I think with the beard now you can play the role of Jesus Christ and eh? you only need the long hair. Yeah, I'm like Mel Gibson, bro. I did a movie with him. I'm, I should have pitched it. I said, hey man, like let's do a remake, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just want to play a pro I'd be happy just playing a prophet. Just even in the background. Mm-hmm. Just uh, you know, yeah. an old testament prophet, you know. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep growing this beard until the end of quarantine. Yeah. So we'll see how bad it gets. <laughs> Good, you know? good. But hey, brother, thank, thank you, you so much, much for so for much jumping for on. And when when do you when are you due to leave um, Jerusalem? Uh, it's supposed to be the twenty sixth of June, but now with the coronavirus thing, I don't have any idea. I'm just in the balance, so I'm just hoping wow. I'm going to be here. But I will let you know to be updated if any changes. Okay. Wait, and then, take it as a blessing. I, you know what? I, if I was you, I would be sitting on the Mount of Olives every single sunset. I would be like just pumping yeah. out worship music over those yeah. over those Jewish um, – I'd probably get kicked out of the, the cemetery, the Jewish tombs. I'd be so unhappy with how much worship music I'd be playing. I'm just – I love yeah. that place, man. It, it's yeah. powerful. Uh, I'd swap places with you in like a heartbeat, like yeah. quarantine. I get it in the I, I run up there every Sunday morning. Most wow. of the, I run up a month of only I sit there and I look over the city. I'm like, this is peace. <laughs> oh. I'm just going gonna, gonna to live on the Sea of Galilee. I just do tours on a boat, you know. You know I've, I have a friend, I have a friend, a doctor in California. He's, he's, he's a good friend with, with Mel, Mel Gibson, actually. And then he, he was here. Yeah. So he was here. He told me that because he had he, he bought a house in France and he's regretting. It's like if I had known, I would have gotten a house by the Sea of Galilee. And I'm like, it's not too late. You send the one in France and you move down it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know what? If, I, if, if this whole if acting doesn't come back after this coronavirus, uh, that might be my goal. I'm gonna buy a little boat, take people out on the Sea of Galilee. You know, play oceans from yeah. Hillsong, let them enjoy their wow. moment. You love oceans. Ah, oh, it's a great song. Great song. I, I love it so much. My friend Angelica, you, there, she likes it so much. There's a new song that I keep playing on repeat, like 24-7 right now. It's called Yeshua. Um, I don't know who who sings it, but it's so good. It's just called Yeshua. It's so good. I just, oh, you know, every morning. And you know what I do? When I wake up and I do my prayer time, I have a little application that tells me which way Jerusalem is, you know. Um oh. So I face Jerusalem when I pray, you know, <laughs> just because it's, it's Mount Zion, man. It's God's yeah. place. God chose the place for a reason. So I'm like, ah, well, that's, that's, that I'm going to choose that place to pray. You know, I'm going to point my yeah. direction towards, it, you know, so there's so much to be said, but Hey dude, yeah. blessings to you. I'm, I'm so grateful that, that God made you walk down the, the Via Della Rosa that day and, and take me away yeah. from the, you know, the interesting <laughs> conversation that I was having. Um, but, um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm so grateful. For you and i'm excited for what god does in your life i know he's gonna just just stir things up and if there's anything i can ever do 
to um, support you and encourage you. Like, you know, I'm 100% in, so. You're doing a lot already. Thank you. And I really appreciate that so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank well, you. hey, say hello to all your um, all your friends that are also becoming priests very soon, all the boys I met. Yeah, I will tell them, I will tell them, okay. <laughs> Stay right. safe, okay. Um, hey, keep in touch, brother. Love you much. Bye. <laughs>